Today we're going to look at the generation of Jesus Christ, his genealogy, part of it. Uh, one of the things I do as a pastor is that I must study the Bible and I must study every part of the Bible. I study genealogies, I study geography of the Bible, I study history in the Bible uh, and all of that. And I know most people just like uh, inspirational parts of the Bible, but you have to study all part of it. And so Matthew uh, starts his account of the life of Jesus with his genealogy. And in Matthew chapter 1, verse 5 and 6, uh, we read, Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab, Boaz begot Obed by Ruth, Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David the king. And David the king begot Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. In ancient times, this is how biographies were written. You, you had to trace the person's history. And, and you talk about who his father was and grandfather was, and it goes back and back and back. So this is what Matthew does when he's tracing the bloodline, the earthly history of Jesus Christ. And he traces it back to King David and, and his son Solomon. And he did show uh, that Jesus then was the son of David. And that was an important fact for the Jews at that time. Uh, for us Gentiles, it may not mean much to us, but it, it was important for the Jews at that time. And in the list of the ancestors, uh, he includes women. And it wasn't very uh, normal to do that because the society at that time was very patriarchal. It was mostly based on men. But Matthew includes women. But all the women that he includes uh, were women who had some trouble with their backgrounds. Uh, there was Tama, uh, who was caught uh, in prostitution. Uh, there is Rahab, who also was unfortunately uh, a prostitute. And then there is Ruth, uh, who was uh, a Moabite, uh, who was, um, the Moabites were a race that Israel were not supposed to deal with. And then there was Uriah's wife, uh, that is Bathsheba, uh, who committed adultery with David. So if you look at it, uh, these are not the kind of women that you would include in your bloodline. But one of the reasons why I like the Bible so much is that it doesn't whitewash history. The Bible tells it as it is. It tells the, the stories as they occurred. And so these are in the genealogy of Jesus. So why did the gospel writer include this? Why did the Holy Spirit inspire this inclusion? It's very important for us also uh, when we trace our own genealogies. Because sometimes you look at your life and you look at the people who have been in your life and there are all kinds of questionable characters in your history. Maybe your parents or your grandparents and, and, or great-grandparents. Or you hear stories that so-and-so was a murderer in your family and so-and-so was a thief in your family and so-and-so was a, um, something else in your family. And sometimes you, you feel like your bloodline has been dirtied. But this gospel account tells us that God is a redeemer, that he's able to take us out of a negative bloodline and do something wonderful with us. And that's what Jesus' bloodline tells us. So if you give your life to Jesus Christ, what he does is he takes your past, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and he does something miraculous and wonderful with it. Don't ever be ashamed of your past and your background, and your ancestry. And don't ever feel that because of a certain ancestry you have, uh, you are cursed, or the, the, the devil is, has control over your ancestry. No, that's not what Christianity teaches. That Christianity teaches us that God redeems all of us. He redeems our tribes. He redeems us from our histories. He redeems us from uh, all kinds of prejudices that people have against us. And he makes us his peculiar people. And that is the story of Jesus Christ. So today, as you think about Christmas and you think about your past, remember that Jesus Christ takes your past as bad as it may seem and he does something good with it. And also remember the curses of your past, of your ancestry, cannot pursue you into your future if you are in Christ. 
Christ the Redeemer makes us whole, even though we came from a very jagged and a rugged background. Let's pray. Say with me, Heavenly Father, you own my past, present, and future. Use my history to work out your purposes in my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I'll catch you again tomorrow. I'm Pastor Mensah Otterville. Shalom, peace, and life to you.